everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Today we're going to take a walk through the garden as I get ready to prepare for next year's garden and what we're growing. And I'm going to kind of show you how I'm getting ready. So let's go on over to the garden. First stop that I thought I'd take you on is into my garage. And you can see I have lots of jugs hanging up in here. I have uh, quite a few behind this one. I'm not sure how many I have. I lost track. But these are all jugs ready for my winter sowing in a couple of months. These are our chickens, most of them. There's still others that are not here. I just gave them some grain, uh, just so you guys could see them all. We have three beautiful roosters. We got that one, that one, and that one. This one and this one are father and son. And then that one was an unexpected rooster from when we bought chickens earlier this spring. These are our live composters. My two beautiful dogs. This is Andy and Autumn. Australian Shepherd, Australian Cattle Dog, and Smoke Bomb. <laughs> Anyways, this is the second official week in uh, December here, Zone 5B, Central Michigan. Last year at this time, I had almost two feet of snow on the ground. This year, no. <laughs> um, it's cold. It's about uh, 35 to 36 this afternoon, but no snow. So yeah. So this is what the garden's looking like right now. This is my rose bed, and then this got other plants in here, but mainly lots of roses in here. This is still here. It's a memorial from when uh, my father-in-law passed away from a massive stroke going on three years in February. So yeah, very important. My medicinal bed has gone to bed for the most part. There's still some that are still kind of alive, but most of it has gone dormant. So you got the lemon balm, and the catnip, valerian, yarrow, and thyme. This is one echinacea, this is pink. And then I have chives, whorehound, sage, no, excuse me, hyssop, that's hyssop. There's sage. And here is another bee balm that I have. I have three different bee balms here. Uh, there's one here. Then my fig tree, another uh, lemon balm, or lemon bee balm is right there. And then I'll show you where the other bee balm is. My asparagus bed that I just moved, we put it, cut it all covered, covered the fig. Um, this is a Chicago hardy fig. Um, this will all get cut down in the spring. Um, Chicago hardies shoot up new roots or new shoots every year. They don't regrow on the same stalk. But yeah, this is my asparagus bed. We just covered this to keep the soil covered. This is my original bee balm. We're going to dig it up and move it in the spring. And then this pallet fence will come down. This was built to keep this contained because um, it goes kind of tall and then it just flops over and gets in the way. So we put it a pallet fence around here to keep it contained. But I'm actually going to move this over next to the lemon bee balm and then we're going to take this down. And I'm actually going to put a double trellis right here, or a double panel trellis right here. So that will be an addition next year. This one's a triple. It's got three cattle panels. So this one will just have two. But yeah, got leaves put down in here. I have strawberries in the back that are covered up nicely. 
but we try to get most of the beds covered with leaves uh, if they weren't uh, covered by like this one's wood chips um, we're gonna have to cover this one later um, but I'm not too worried about it because uh, the leaves, the foliage from the hollyhocks is kind of already a green compost. We're just letting it uh, compact down and cover the ground. And then I'll, I'll add some more uh, wood chips or straw later to cover the bare spots. But it's kind of cool when you can let the, the plants that you had growing be the natural compost cover, ground cover. So everything is pretty much covered up, covered up. I have to keep covering my lavender because somehow chickens keep getting in here and they keep on covering it. So I have to cover it back up so it will survive. Then I have um, sage and back there is marshmallow. This is my wild mullein. I had one plant grow in the garden this year, which is good. Um, just one plant gives me enough mullein for over the season. And then I was able to take half half the stalk. I mean, if this is half, you can see how long the seed stalk of this bad boy is. It gets really tall. Um, but I took half of it so I could uh, save seeds and share them with those who don't have uh, mullein uh, in their area. So yep, that's my mullein. And then these beds here with a lattice on top. This is where I have my garlic planted this year. I actually have two and a half beds of garlic. Um, I have half a bed there, and then this bed, and this bed over here. These are all garlic. I purchased all of them. Well, not all, most of them. I purchased most of them from MI Gardener this year. And then the ones over there, that half bed, I purchased uh, from a vendor at the farmer's market. I just bought a bunch of heads of garlic. They're a hard neck variety. Um, so I just bought them and, and planted them just in case I wasn't able to get garlic this year because that was a hot commodity. So just like seeds were in the spring, garlic this fall was a very hot commodity. And then last but not least in this garden area, I have rosemary. And generally here in zone 5B, um, anything from zone 5 and further north, um, rosemary generally doesn't live uh, uh, over the winter. It generally dies um, because it's, a, it's considered a tender annual. It can't take the freezing temperatures. But I'm hoping, because I really put a lot of mulch down around this plant, that maybe, maybe I can get it to overwinter in the ground and uh, it'll come back next year but uh, we'll see if not hey I tried it's not doing me any harm by sitting in the garden over the winter so I just let that be so yep yeah, this is my main garden area and then I'll take you to my um, other garden area that we're getting ready for the spring a thing to notate in case you did not know is I use the fence of my dog run uh, for a lot of vining plants. Next year I will be planting um, a lot more beans on the fence. This can really, really uh, grow a lot of beans. So that's what I'm doing again is using the, the fence because it's a natural trellis for my pole beans. This is my container bed area, and Mr. Skidmark is watching it for me. Um, he was called Skidmark because uh, when he was just uh, getting his feathers, after uh, you know he outgrew being a chick, he literally looked like uh, he had been run over. He had the markings of what looked like skid marks on him, but now he's a beautiful, gorgeous rooster. This is my other in-ground garden area. Uh, we might be increasing it later, but for now we've got it covered with the leaves um, to keep it covered. And then uh, I have in this fence area is uh, one of my main catnip plants. Uh, why do I have it fenced in? I have it fenced in because I have cats. 
and uh, they have killed two of my plants already uh, because I have a couple that uh, they're really into the catnip and they'll eat it down to nothing and uh, by doing so they kill the plant so I have this one completely enclosed so the cats can't get into it because catnip isn't just for the cats it's really good for uh, medicinal purposes um, if you make it into a tea and also if you dehydrate it you can save it for later and give it to the cats when this plant has gone dormant and as you can see this is why I do this good old smoke bomb high smoke bomb <laughs> and then of course I have some girls in here they come in here when they want and they add their beautiful fertilizer to um, this area so it works I don't let them in the main garden right now because I have found that even with the lattice down they are digging up my garlic and they're uncovering the plants that need to stay covered so they're kicked out of the main garden right now but they're welcome to come in here and fertilize and do all that to this garden area so that's what the garden's looking like and kind of how I'm getting ready for next year got a lot more work to do but um, most of it's ready most of the prep work is done so as it gets closer to uh, March or so I'll be filling those jugs that I show, showed you with seeds and getting them out into my garden, my main garden area, and uh, with a process that's called winter sowing. I'll leave a link below to the playlist, but um, if you go to my channel, you'll find a playlist called winter sowing. It's got quite a few different videos there about um, how I do winter sowing and kind of what it is. So anyways, I just thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. And until next time, I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.